When it comes to Samsung's mid-range phones, the A50 series has been a fan favorite. Last year, Samsung launched the redesigned A54, and this year it's time for the A55. Let's see what new features we get to see this year. I'll walk you through all the differences in this video, so let's quickly hit that like button. When it comes to the design of the phone, the Samsung A54 had a flagship-level design last year. The design of the A54 was so similar to the S23 that people couldn't easily tell whether it was the A54 or the S23. This year the A55 also follows the same design, but to differentiate it from flagship models, the A55 comes with Key Island. The Key Island creates a slight bump on the side. It's worth noting that the A55 is not the first phone to feature Key Island. It was previously seen in A15 and A25, though it didn't receive much love from fans. Let's see how the popular A55 is received by fans. Talking about the display of the phones, the A54 boasts a large 6.4-inch screen with a super smooth 120Hz refresh rate. It supports HDR10 Plus content and has a display brightness of 1000 nits. On the other hand, the A55 has a slightly larger display by 0.1 inch and its brightness surpasses that of the A54. It also comes with a 120 Hz refresh rate and supports HDR10 Plus content. Additionally, the Galaxy A55 offers a bit more protection for its glass with Gorilla Glass Victus, compared to the A54 Gorilla Glass 5. Both phones come with an IP67 water and dustproof rating. Let's talk about the processor, memory, and storage of these phones. The A54 came with Samsung's in-house Exynos 1380 built on a 5 nanometer process, However, the A55 has upgraded to the Exynos 1480, which uses a more advanced 4 nanometer process. In terms of competition in the mid range category, the A55 processor might be considered somewhat weak if we compare it. The Exynos 1480 is somewhat equivalent to the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1. In the storage department, both phones come with a base storage of 128 GB. However, this year the A55 has more RAM compared to the A54, increasing from 6 to 8 GB. Let's talk about the camera. It seems like Samsung has made it clear that if you want a telephoto lens in a budget, you'll have to go for the S23 Fan Edition. This year the A55 offers the same third camera sensor that appears to be a macro lens, which might not be as useful. Besides that, you still get the same 15-megapixel main camera, 12-megapixel ultra-wide camera, and 32-megapixel front camera. However, the Exynos 1480 might bring some software improvements for pictures. Samsung has made improvements in the audio department for the A55, as the audio quality on the A54 wasn't quite pleasing for the fans. The A54 speakers were considered weaker than Samsung's other mid-range phones. Additionally, the battery and charging speed of both phones remain the same, which is quite good for the mid-range category. Unfortunately, wireless charging support is still absent this year. However, the A55 is offering years of software support compared to the A54 which surpasses other competitive phones like the OnePlus 12R in my opinion. The A55 is a small upgrade compared to the A54. If you have last year's A54, there isn't a significant reason given by Samsung to compel you to upgrade. If Samsung introduces new AI features in the A55, it could be considered a good upgrade. But overall, I don't think you should rush for it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more new videos. I'll see you in the next one. This is Ali signing off.